Mr. Ambassador, thank you for having us here. Thank you for having me. So our conversation today comes just after four terrorist attacks in a row in Israel, which killed 11 innocent civilians. What is the U.S. and President Biden's, of course, message to Prime Minister Bennett and to the Israeli society due to this? Well, first of all, as you know, uh, the president reached out to the prime minister yesterday and expressed the, 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 his heartfelt um, condolences, not only to the prime minister, but to the people of this country and express this outrage, this, this insanity of violence ruining people's lives and, and how terrible it is, not only for the families that are destroyed, but the, you know, the, letting these terrorists break apart and try to win, they can't win. The terrorists can't win, and that's the message of, of the president, the prime minister, and reinforce that our bonds between our two countries are unbreakable and unstoppable. And I, there's nothing positive that ever comes out of anyone getting killed or violence. I, the only thing I, I saw yesterday and uh, B'nai Brock is that Arab police officer ran to the scene to help, ran to the scene. And I'm gonna go to the uh, Shiva tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this is what Israel's about. It's not about letting terrorists take charge. It's about this is a this is a melting pot. This is a community. This is a country of, of you know of everyone, and we can't lose sight of that. But the violence must stop. At the same time, in Israel, there was uh, criticism when Secretary Blinken decided to mention uh, settler violence just days after the Beersheba attack as a factor that might uh, uh, raise tension in the area. Do you agree with this ass assessment? L let's be clear: the terrorism is terrorism. The violence and the destruction of people's lives, there's no equivalence, nothing. Mm -hmm. There's no equivalence. It's, it's very clear that our heart breaks for the people of Israel and the lives that are shadowed. The question on settled violence, everyone agrees on settled violence. But I'm not, making, I'm not equating one with the other, and, and nor was the secretary. It's two separate issues having nothing to do with either one, and to be clear, our heart breaks for the people of Israel. Since um, June 2021, um, over a half a billion dollars have been transferred from the U.S. to the PA. And I wonder if you are comfortable with the fact that the PA still uh, continue to pay for convicted terrorists. The administration's position on these payments need to stop. They're, they are terrible and they need to stop. And every single American politician, every the president, Secretary Blinken, everyone who was is it raised in the last meeting with it, uh, Abu Mazen? It's always mentioned. It is always talked about. They need to stop the payments. The money, the money that is going is to the Palestinian people. There's rules. The money is going to, for education and health care to help the Palestinian people uh, have a live a better life. But make no mistake, the payments must end. By the way, if we are talking about Palestinians, when will the Jerusalem consulate will be open? It's clear, the administration has been very clear we want to open the consulate and we're working with the government to do so. Even though Israelis are truly object to this? Again, we're working on trying to reopen the consulate. In the near future? Obviously. Obviously, okay. As we sit here in Tel Aviv, efforts are still being uh, made to finalize a nuclear agreement with Iran, of course. Do you believe an agreement will be reached? Uh, you know, I want to make a step back, okay. okay? Step back for a second. The president was very clear since he became the nominee for president. He will not stand by and allow the Iranians to have a nuclear weapon. That is our position. That is what our position we have taken. And we're working with Israel and the region to make sure that doesn't happen. Is it means that JCPOA will be revived soon? You know, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, we're obviously, we have said from the get-go, we'd like a diplomatic solution. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, with agreement, without agreement, the, the, the relationship with the United States and Israel is unbreakable. We will work with the Israelis with or without agreement, helping, making sure the Iranians do not obtain a nuclear weapon. I have a simple question, Mr. Ambassador. Are Iran's revolutionary guards are terror group? in your eyes, in your views? I think Iran is, is a state sponsor of terror. And regarding the IRGC? Again, I, again, I, this, Iran, as you know, is the most sanctioned country in the world, mm -hmm. and will, is, is, is certainly uh, a terrorist in, my, in many people's eyes, including our own. But if the designation of the IRGC is a barrier to reviving the JCPOA, what will be the U.S. response? 
I, I cannot get into the negotiations of what's going on today or tomorrow in Vienna because I'm not a party to those specific mm -hmm. negotiations. But I can tell you, as the president's representative, as a president of the United States who refers to himself as a Zionist, as someone who knows more about Middle East than probably any president, uh, dead or alive, understands about the significance of this country and the importance of the security, we're going to do whatever we can to make sure the Iranians do not obtain a nuclear weapon. But at the same time, Ambassador, um, those countries express a bit of disappointment from the U.S. roles in the region. We were the, uh, I would say, the bridesmaid of mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Abraham Accords, the United States and the former administration, and now our administration. Friends will have disagreements on particular issues, but we are the catalyst to bringing uh, this, this group of countries together for peace uh, in the region. Let's talk about um, the war between Russia and Ukraine. Um, were you surprised to hear that Prime Minister Bennett uh, met Putin? Well, first of all, um, the Prime Minister is in constant contact with this administration. The relationship between the Prime Minister and our President is, is you know, completely adjoined. Anyone who's helping mediate, anyone who's helping try to get peace, mm -hmm. you know, we respect. We respect uh, the Prime Minister's ability. His his ability to, th to think and to work with the Ukrainians, to work with the Russians. Again, ultimately, um, you know, who knows where all this goes, but we were totally happy with uh, his, uh, his conversations and happy with the idea that he is in communication with the White House. He does nothing with, you know, we do this collectively. Is Israel doing enough? in order to support Ukraine? Yeah, I think we're, the United States has numerous conversations and are totally happy with the relationships that uh, the administration is doing vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Ukraine and what they're doing vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the, the mediation efforts. But did you expect Israel to do more uh, in, to counter Russia aggressions? I was at the uh, foreign ministry uh, on Friday where the foreign ministry brought me down, to, or brought us down, the secretary brought it down to the situation room mm -hmm. or whatever the and we were able to still see the field hospital uh, that the Israelis set up in Ukraine, which had had hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of patients going through the field hospital. So I, my point is I, we are very happy and, and, and comfortable with the position of Israel and what they're doing vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and what they're doing vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, Russia. Most of the uh, components of Iron Domes are uh, made in the U.S. Mm. Would the U.S. support the transfer of uh, the Iron Dome system to Ukraine? Yeah, I'm going to let um, the people at the White House and Defense Department determine where weapon systems are placed. But I think it's important you mention the Iron Dome. You know, it should not be lost on the Israelis that, you know, two weeks ago, the president signed, as he promised, mm -hmm. a replenishment of the Iron Dome, a billion dollars of replenishment. That's what an unbreakable bonds look like. That's what we're trying to do, and that's what we will continue to do. Oh, last question in the head of Passover, that is just our, around the corner, and I wonder when Israel will be part of the visa waiver program. Well, let me just tell you something. I think that every Israeli asks you this. Well, more importantly, um, every day I'm working on this, okay? I'm, in, I'm working very close with Minister Shaket, and I'm going to do whatever I can do to get this done. We should have the visa waiver program. We should have people be able to go uh, from Israel uh, to the United States with, with, uh, with, without having to stand lines with visas. That's what we're trying to obtain, and I'm working tirelessly to make it happen, because that's what friends do, that's what allies do, and that's what we're going to do. Mr. Ambassador, thank you. Thank you very much. Toda Rabah.